Good morning and welcome back. A um, little bit of an update. I've managed to glue uh, or assemble the screen the way I'm kind of liking it. Um, a little bit of adhesive on the side I'm not too fond about. Um, just on the edges of the plastic there, but it's really not that bad. I can always change that later. It's just double-sided sticky tape. Um, but you can see uh, the screen is in there. I've removed the protective cover on the actual OLED screen on the inside. They have that scratch guard stuff and it was actually uh, starting to look way too foggy by the time you had the front uh, protection on, so it was redundant, so that got removed. I currently have the little Pezzo down there uh, somewhat disconnected because it was starting to drive me nuts where it wasn't muted. But if I tilt it this way, we can just see inside there, um, hang on, left and right hand. Um, I've got some screws into some little plastic mount blocks that I glued into the uh, cardboard last night. And um, I only have two screws right now and that's all it seems to need, but I could put all four in to hold it in there. That way it's nice and removable and repairable or, you know, as uh, you might hear on uh, Ben Heck, don't make things you can't take apart. Um, you'll see that the foamy sort of... Uh, stuff around the inside. That's one of the reasons why I use uh, white Gorilla Glue and uh, I'm pretty, pretty specific about that. Uh, Gorilla Glue has a brown Gorilla Glue which can do the same sort of stuff but the white Gorilla Glue does it a little differently. Um, for, for first of all it's white so it's easy for painting over if you're going to do that but um, in my making model aircraft and looking for different adhesives that are both light and strong, um, Gorilla Glue uh, cures with moisture in the air. But if you uh, blow or breathe on it or get it wet sp directly, it'll actually foam up. It'll increase its uh, the foaming action. And that foam actually is, well, it's like it's made out of epoxy actually once it sets. So it sets quite hard. And it adds a lot of rigidity to little structures like this cardboard structure or something was balsa. Uh, or if I made it out of 30 second uh, plywood that I've got. I might do this case in 30 second plywood uh, later on. And, you know, be able to sand and round the corners and stuff a little better. But it's plenty strong enough. Um, I'll get that back done with the window in it later. But, uh, um, yeah, let's get back to the front here. The uh, cardboard itself on the outside is now quite strong and rigid. It it's, doesn't even really feel flimsy like cardboard until you get to the back where it's kind of open down here. Otherwise, um, it won't be too long before I mount the uh, the brains inside that. But as it is right now, um, with all that mess in the back there, the uh, wires sort of uh, outweigh it. The cardboard and stuff and that this is constructed out of weighs less than the uh, the sort of spring strength of the wire that's plugging into the back of the screen. And uh, I'm just powering it off uh, a cheap little uh, power brick right now. It'll run for like, uh, I think something I worked at the other night, uh, something like 12 or 14 hours off that one brick. But I plan on uh, using simple 9 volt on the inside as an option as well. And if I stay with an actual Nano and not uh, a Pro Mini, um, you'll be able to always power it by USB and plug it into the computer and have your running scores or whatever. So I think I might actually keep it Nano, but if I use a Pro Mini, um, for one, they're a little cheaper. Um, I would just have to uh, plug in the uh, programming header to be able to see on the computer screen what's going on. But uh, I just have to uh, get a few more things done for the mounting and then decide what board. And then I'm going to uh, make a menu screen and a splash screen. And uh, I'm probably going to mount a button, a single uh, attack button in the middle of that deck uh, for kind of like the accept button on the menu. And uh, I'll just use uh, changes in either paddle to control, uh, control menu options if I get to the point of actually putting a menu in this. Anyhow, we'll see about that and uh, thanks again for watching. How to cut clear plastic. Just quickly rub on some black marker and uh, go ahead and cut it or score it with a laser depending on uh, how thick the plastic is. Here it's just the top of a CD jewel case and uh, I might try two passes at this but then when it's done you have a scored line you can just snap or break or if you use clippers on the edge the crack will run into the seam that the laser has just cut 
but you do have to uh, put some black sharpie or something on the surface of the plastic to give the uh, beam something to make some heat with. Anyhow, thought I would just update that. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. <laughs> Heather says thanks for watching.